Well, uh, we are an, we work as an artistic team, which is something that we think has also something to do with feminisms and how uh, working collaboratively for us is a way of uh, questioning authorship as something that has only to do with an individual. And we always work in collaboration. It's not something that we do for one piece or s and then we leave it, but it's something that we always do. It's also a way to somehow not let uh, people know exactly what our, our identity as individuals is. This is also why our names, we only use our surnames and so that you don't really know what gender are the, um, the authors and who exactly they are. Um, we decided to start with a, a film still from the work which is being shown here at Global Feminism. It's called Aquis, Un Beso. It's an old work for us, it's from 1996. But um, uh, we want to contextualize it with a little bit of more recent works. In this video, um, the, you can see uh, these uh, things I was talking about, not knowing exactly the uh, defined identity, who is kissing, is it two women, is it who are they. Uh, you can never see the faces completely. And um, also there's um, something disrupting the uh, visual pleasure for the viewer. Um, some people might say, oh, two women kissing, that's so nice. So then we put um, an heavy argument. argument on the background so that um, uh, the, it doesn't matter, not... the, the argument has no translation because it doesn't matter what it's about because an argument is always an argument. <laughs> Uh, around these years, 1996 and 1998, many of our works were dealing with, I mean, we were on, the, on our works. Uh, it's not only because we wanted to make a self-portrait. Uh, it's more, it has more to do with it just the easiest for us. Uh, it was uh, us that we had, so it was us that, that we used. And also with something that has to do with representation of our community. Mm -hmm. We didn't really want to be, uh, we knew there weren't many people in our country who were uh, speaking openly about uh, queerness or about lesbianism and, and showing themselves in an open way. So we knew that we, there, was a, there could be um, a problem with people yeah. taking us for, as a representation for lesbian community or queers, and they would say, well, we have these two artists already, we don't need anybody else. And we, we, we don't, don't want to be the, the quote of the exhibitions yeah. anyway. And we don't, we, don't, we don't represent anybody else than ourselves. And so, um, as, as I said, it, it's us most of the time doing these uh, works. Uh, Self-portraits that... Um, this is a uh, portrait who, who play with uh, Goya's work because we use so many different artists in our work. Our work is dealing with politics of representation, not only with politics only. <laughs> But we are we make the world in, in the we live in the art world and we want to express ourselves inside that. So we, we quote this work from Goyas, which is a work who de, uh, the Goyas work is uh, dealing with war issues in, in terms of civil violence. War, Spanish civil yeah, war. it's a Spanish civil war. Uh, one person similar to other fighting each other till they die. Yeah, people would bury themselves until uh, up to their knees so that they couldn't move and they would throw stones one to each other until one of them would die. So it was a way of... Yeah, in, ca in this case, we, you don't, we, it's not as violent, but anyway, we can move because it's not a Photoshop issue. Yeah, many of the pictures, you, you don't really see who, who is on the picture. And we also use a double image uh, most of the time, uh, double pictures. You don't, because for us, we said it's, uh, inter it's important to question authorship and also to question the original of the work. We don't know which photograph is the original one. This is a portrait, also said portrait, uh, that we, t we quote in this case Dushan and Bruce Nauman. So it's we called self-portrait as a fountain. Yeah. 
And, um, and again, we, we are not looking towards the camera so that you can't yeah. really define us. And we are playing a, a gender in, with in gender. This, in this case, we want to use a queer environment. I mean, the picture is made in a bar room, but a dirty one. You can see the image. The image is in, on a mural, which is also with graffitis over this. So we, uh, we uh, part of our work is also dealing with the places that we occupy in society. Yes, um, we have uh, this, uh, all these series of works uh, that we made after living in uh, San Francisco for a little bit more than a year. And feeling uh, for us, it was like we had this utopian idea about San Francisco as a beautiful place where you could live freely. And we had this Hockney's <laughs> um, image, so happy with swimming, swimming pools, pools with bright colors. Fine. So we started to, to do a lot of work with, place, with sim, swimming pools that were empty, that we would photograph them in the moments when they are not being used. And we have been doing a different series around places that we uh, analyze ex exactly when they, are, they should not be analyzed. We look at them mm. when you shouldn't look at them. We, we, we'll go to San Francisco, we'll, we went there, because we want to live kind of paradise. Suppose that for homosexuals there's a place in the world called San Francisco, which is a paradise. So what we find there is not exactly what we really call a paradise. So, and it was in 1997 when we was there, and so the, the AIDS was destroyed the community also. So it was like a completely the opposite from Hockney's experience. So we started to think about what kind of places there are in society for us, and what kind of lands, and what kind of, uh, and this land give us an identity to. So we start to think in the reason why in this society we are, we are always associated with kind of a happiness, like in discotheques or like in swimming pools. So we decided to choose uh, to talk about these places when uh, everything is closed, but it's starting again. For example, these these pictures are taken on some discotheques after the party, but just in the same moment that the people leave the party, so there are only the rest. Yeah. So again, we look at the spaces not when we should look at them, but yeah. when you're not supposed to be there and you're not supposed to, to be enjoying the, the, the images were were taken in Madrid, actually. Yeah. This is a more uh, recent world, uh, sorry, a uh, recent work from 2004. And here we, well, uh, androgyny and playing with masculinity is another issue that uh, is very present in our works from the beginning. As you have seen in the pictures when we said the identity or the gender is not easy to, to grasp. And here we, we started to work with other people uh, apart from us. Uh, we uh, and with also with cinematographic discourse with cinema, because we thought um, we wanted to talk about the construction of gender and how so many people talk about how uh, femininity is constructed, but not so many uh, talk or uh, analyze how masculinity is also a construction and can be made up of things that you add or things that you put on your behavior. So we decided to invite to an open casting uh, a lot of women who would play James Dean uh, in Rebel Without a Cause. And we, we just chose a scene from the, from the film and uh, showed it to all of them so that they would uh, reenact this part of the film in their individual way, the way they wanted to. We, we take the screenplay, so they say, need to say things that well, the scene that we chose was the, uh, just after a car crash and one person died and James didn't survive. So he, saw, he said things that I, I need to go there, I need to do it because they call me a chicken. So I need to go there and kill someone in a way because they call you chicken. So masculinity is just a chicken question. I mean, it's just a war question. Just the war can uh, push people to go to do something that they don't want to do really. Well, for us it was also interesting that there were many different women mm. playing this role in different ways and to see how, what uh, kind of uh, strategies they would use to look like a man.
Yeah, that's important in this, in this casting. We don't give them any kind of makeup or know how to be masculine. So they choose the way they present by themselves. Yeah. And also the fact that we chose cinema is also, it has also to do with the idea that cinema is giving us the images of how to be a real man and it's uh, also a real woman. So for us it was um, really uh, important to quote this discourse from cinema. Yeah, for us at the, at the beginning when we started to, to uh, work with cinema was difficult because we realized that uh, men say nothing in the films. It's really difficult to find a, even a, a complete sentences because they are always saying nothing. Just women are talking and talking and talking. Yeah, and we men looked are for just the look. scenes for, uh, where they say something really interesting that we could get for you know for the casting, and then we went crazy because we we realized that women are it's true. Women are talking all the time, and, and men they just move. You know, they just say something like cool but short and, and then when you decontextualize it, it's like nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so... <laughs> but all of us feel like the opposite. So in this particular world, we, this is a small, a, a short, sorry, short video. And this is a guide's instructions to be a masculine. Like a manual, so it's a video manual. We are not talking about drag kings issues. We, are, uh, we ask women to play the role, but play the role to pretend to be real, but without health more than the clothes and the attitude. So in this video, we just make a, a kind of a manual. So it's under- Instructions manual. Yeah, there's a discotheque music and the, the, the woman who appeared here is playing different poses, which uh, help you to be masculine. If you need to be masculine, for example, you need to learn in one hour, it's completely yeah, possible. It's like an ironic, ironic manual. And the video is divided in sections, like one, uh, how to drink, two, how to uh, sit down, how to move, how to wait. And then uh, the woman is performing all these uh, different attitudes so that in the end, if you watch this video all day long, after, as you said, after a while, you, yeah, you can. should be able you to it. perform it. <laughs> this is a video called Exercise of Power, but it's based, uh, we mix two films here. Uh, one was Schindler List and the other was The Apartment. So there's a woman playing the role of the chief in both films. The boss. The boss, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah and uh, well, here we wanted to analyze uh, how power is dealt with in cinema. And so we chose, we were invited to do a job in a, our work in an old factory, an old tobacco factory, and we could choose to do anything we wanted. It was an abandoned to tobacco factory. So we thought of films that could have been shooted in similar environments or that had to do with the idea of how the, power, uh, the structures of power could, um, could, be, uh, could fun function in an environment like this. And we chose these two films, Chinda's List, and we chose some scenes that we thought were interesting on the poses of the boss uh, of the um, powerful man and how he acts and he moves to say uh, the things he wants to say and uh, and then the apartment where there's also this uh, uh, the boss acting like a boss really and we did uh, we mm, we had this woman to perform everything but here yeah. we, we really we characterized her a little uh, bit little yes bit a little bit her. And this is just uh, the last project we are, it's not finished yet, and it's something that we have been doing in the Philippines. Yes, because mm. we were there, so we decided to work uh, with Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now is a film shoot completely in the Philippines, but represented by Vietnam. So all the people think that they are in Vietnam, but they are in Philippines. Something happens the same with the gender, that you don't really realize <laughs> what the gender is. So we decide, we choose this woman, so she's playing the role in the film of Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now, playing that the same issues. And I think that we, we, we ran out of time. <laughs> yes. Sorry.
Thank you. Thank you.